What's happening, everybody? Ryan Thomas here live on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. The TTSP is back, and today, Tuesday, March 24th, big news in the world of the National Football League. We're doing so, the Carolina Panthers free up $19.5 million on their salary cap, which was not surprising news in the slightest, that Carolina decided to part ways with Cam Newton. I was not shocked. I was not stunned. I expected it because, as I've said on the podcast, you know, episodes, the last few episodes, actually, the, excuse me, the quarterback market is at a very odd point right now. The quarterback market has a lot of teams that already have their answer at quarterback, there have been guys that have went to teams that you wouldn't really necessarily expect them to go to, like Marcus Mariota. He gets picked up pretty quickly, actually, in the free agency market by the Las Vegas Raiders to push Derek Carr, to compete with Derek Carr, whatever you want to call it. Um, Tom Brady goes to the Tembe Buccaneers. Phillip Rivers goes to the Indianapolis Colts. So the teams that have glaring needs at the quarterback position are very few and far between. Really the only team in the National Football League that has a glaring need now is the Los Angeles Chargers and head coach Anthony Lynn. Chargers head coach has come out and has said that they are more than comfortable rolling with Tyrod Taylor, which to me is code for, hey, we're probably going to roll with Tyrod for now, but we'll probably draft somebody in the 2020 NFL draft as well. Um, The last time we heard a team say that they were going to roll with Tyrod Taylor, they drafted Baker Mayfield. And before you knew it, Baker Mayfield was in and Tyrod Taylor was out. So last time before that, we heard that a team was maybe going to roll with Tyrod. They rolled with him. They let him go to get some cap relief. And then they drafted his successor in the Buffalo Bills. So, you know, I'm not really fully sold that Tyrod Taylor um, is going to be the quarterback for the for the LA Chargers. I always catch myself, I always try to cut myself off and catch myself and say that the LA Chargers, um, or I say the San Diego Chargers instead of LA. I think it's stupid that there's two teams in LA, but it is what it is. Anyway, back to the subject matter. What does this mean for Cam Newton? Where could he go? And I think that that is a, a really important question to ask ourselves right now because we don't exactly know what version of Cam Newton we have we don't know who we have what version is this cam newton is this a broken down worn down cam newton or was that just 2019's version and could he come back from this foot injury and put together a comeback season of epic proportions and lead a team to an mvps caliber performance i am somewhere on the middle in 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 terms of this i think that cam newton could put forth productive seasons in the National Football League. Is he what he once was in terms of an MVP caliber player? Um, I don't know if he'll ever reclaim that. And the last time we saw that, that was 2015. That was five years ago, which really doesn't sound like that long ago. But in the world of the National Football League, you know it and I know it. Five years is is ancient history five years ago five years ago cam newton was battling peyton manning in the super bowl and peyton manning retired moments after that game so the nfl is quick at evolving and cam newton is a player that i have a lot of respect for his athleticism his size his strength his ability to play through injury, but that ability to play through injury has put him in this position of being released by the team that drafted him, the team that he spent nine years with, the team that he was in the Dan and Oikos commercials wearing their jerseys. It was apparent to me early on that Cam Newton and Carolina was a big, was a great fit, was a great fit for that city, was a great fit for um, the, the star power of the National Football League. And now Cam Newton is wearing no team's jersey. He is a free agent. He is eligible to be picked up by any team. And getting cut and freeing up that $19.5 million uh, cap hit from the cap in terms of the Carolina Panthers, Carolina moves on. They got Teddy Bridgewater already in the building. They're more than comfortable with that. Cam Newton, on the other hand, he'll never get a deal like that again, a deal quite as lucrative as that. But never say never. Never say never. 
Let me correct myself. Never say never. Because Ryan Tannehill got a $118 million deal and essentially around $62, $63 million for 11 starts, eight of which in the regular season, three of which in the postseason, in the playoffs. And Marcus Mariota got a deal that could pay him tons of money if he were to start and produce and be impactful for the Los Angeles or for the uh, uh, for the Las Vegas Raiders. So never say never in terms of Cam Newton. And maybe if we were talking 2 3 weeks ago, maybe the Colts would have kicked the tires on Cam. Maybe the Raiders would have kicked the tires on Cam. Maybe if the Cincinnati Bengals didn't have the first overall pick, maybe they would kick the tires on Cam, although they have a cap problem with their quarterback and Andy Dalton in its own right. The fits are few and far between for Cam, and the market is so small. I cannot stress it enough. And whichever team decides to kick the tires and to ultimately take the chance on Cam Newton, I think that they will be rewarded. Because I do think Cam Newton is looking at this situation right now, saying to himself, I'm a former 2015 you know, NFL MVP. I was voted on by my peers as the best player in the world, the most valuable player in the world to my team. Led my team to a 15-1 and record and ultimately came up short against a very vaunted, um, deadly front seven in Denver uh, in the uh, Super Bowl. And, you know, really... A lot of things went wrong in that game. A lot of things can go wrong in one game, whether it's the Super Bowl or a week three battle that features two teams that are uh, one and one. I mean, football is football. These things happen. But I think that whatever whatever team, whichever team takes a chance on Cam Newton, they will be rewarded for his, for his services. Um, he will see this as a new lease on life and a, and a new opportunity. But the real question is, will that come on the bench or will that come in the field? And more often times than not, as I look through the 32 National Football League teams, I see Cam Newton as more of a fit as a backup than I do as a starter. The short list, ultra short list of teams features one team that I could see him going to. And I already mentioned that team in the Los Angeles Chargers. So I think that if you're really diving into where where Cam Newton could go, he would be an ideal fit for a team that has a quarterback that is young, that is athletic, that is big, and as strong as he is. And yeah, the first team that comes to mind is the Buffalo Bills. The connection is uncanny between Cam Newton and Josh Allen. The um, comparisons are there. That was someone that Josh Allen was compared to. Josh Allen was oftentimes compared to Cam Newton in the pre-draft process. You go back, you can check it out yourself. Another quarterback that he was often compared to is Carson Wentz. Um, and they had the same coach in college, and, and they ran very similar style offenses at the collegiate level, whether it was at North Dakota State or Wyoming. But would Cam Newton come to Buffalo as a backup? Look, I'm not advocating for the Bills to go after Cam Newton. I'm just saying that the fit would make sense if it did happen. It would make a lot of sense. Brandon Bean was a part of that staff when Cam Newton was drafted. Sean McDermott was part of that staff when Cam Newton was drafted. They have done their fair share, safe to say, of plugging players in from the Panthers to the Bills. Star Latouille, um, Josh Norman, um, Vernon Butler, AJ Klein. I mean, you could go on and on. You really could. That's just that's just four names, and I know that there's more than that. Mike Tolbert. Um, I believe the Tolbert thing was was that. No, that was Sean McDermott. Yeah, that was when McDermott was coaching. So, yeah, that was McDermott's first season. So, yeah, Mike Tolbert is another one. Um, and I really think that the Cam Newton idea is one to, to consider, but what headspace is Cam Newton in right now? Who is living in Cam Newton's head rent-free? Is it the guy that's humble and loyal, or is it the guy that is a little bit of a showboat, a little bit me, 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 a little bit uh, annoying, shall I say? And I think that's something that Carolina just simply didn't want to deal with when they're trying to focus on 
getting these players acclimated to this new staff and Matt Rule and this new offense that Matt Rule is um, wanting to run in Carolina and defense, everything. that The team is completely turning a new leaf. Would Cam Newton be willing to be a part of a, of a team as a backup, backing up a quarterback that is younger than him, that is entrenched as the starter? I have another theory on this as well. Let's just say if Cam Newton were to go to the Bills or if Cam Newton were to go to the Jets or if Cam Newton were to go to a team that has a young quarterback, let's just say. And those are the two teams that really pop into my head. If Darnold or Allen were to struggle, then Cam Newton, the whispers of, oh, we should put Cam Newton in, would be deafening. And I don't think that's good for either Allen or Donald's development. So for that reason alone, um, I would be a little bit against it. But if you are a Buffalo Bills fan and you ask yourself, God forbid, if Josh Allen were to go down four games, five games, however many games, let's just say five, could we trust Matt Barkley? to step in and win us three out of five games, four out of five games. I don't think you can. And if that's the case, then that is the difference between the Buffalo Bills being a playoff team or not being a playoff team. Just that one position. If the quarterback position is the most important position in the game, then the second most important position is the backup quarterback Um, in terms of not second most important position but i should say the second most important position that's a backup position the first most important position that's a backup position is the quarterback that's what i meant by that number one starting quarterback number one backup position backup quarterback that is how i've always seen it and in the days of the buffalo bills history where you go back to the 1990s heyday, the 1990s glory days with Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly could do, could go down, and you knew that Frank Wright was going to trot out onto that field and and make something happen and, and put it together. Trot out onto that gridiron and, and make it happen. You can roll the highlight film, the greatest comeback game, and, and I could drop the mic after that, really. So this is important, and for the Buffalo Bills – who have very few needs, they have filled and have attacked the positions of need time and time and time again. For the Bills to have very few needs, this is still a need. Matt Barkley has been inconsistent at best as the quarterback two of the Buffalo Bills. One week against the Jets, when he first got picked up, he looked like a world beater. And every opportunity he has had to play Ever since, I don't care what the circumstances were, whether it was against New England or what, whatever, I don't care. The quarterback, too, has to at least be competitive and help the team remain competitive while the starter is out. And Matt Barkley has not done that. Matt Barkley has struggled at doing that. So I look forward to seeing how this plays out. I look forward to seeing uh, whether or not the Buffalo Bills do make this decision. And if they do, what will the financials look like? That's the biggest question with any free agent, as always. What will the financials look like if Team A or Team B bring this guy in? And lastly, as I said, Cam Newton, first overall draft choice, a guy that was considered... Um, a game-breaking talent heading into his National Football League career and a game-breaking talent in the NCAA for Auburn, the biggest name in college football at that time. He gets picked first overall in the 2011 draft by the Carolina Panthers, who were a horrible team. He is the face of the franchise. He builds that team, is a very big part in changing the, the moxie and the morale at that time within the Carolina Panthers organization and five years after an MVP season, five years after a Super Bowl berth, a Super Bowl, not berth, they'd been to one before, but a Super Bowl NFC championship, he's released. That is a tricky, tricky thing to dive into. In terms of his legacy as a Carolina Panther, 
I I really think it's a it's a glass half full legacy. Do I think that he deserves more money than a Ryan Tannehill? Probably. Does he deserve more money than a Marcus Mariota? Probably. Is he going to get more money than Ryan Tannehill or Marcus Mariota? Probably not. And that is what is so fascinating about the National Football League. There are teams that have interest in a player, and then there are teams that are over the moon about a player, rightfully or wrongfully. And you saw that little window of opportunity that Ryan Tannehill had. He took it and he ran with it. But to pay him $118 million, to guarantee him over $60 million, it's a little bit asinine. When you look at the the, uh, Las Vegas Raiders, I know I'm going to make that mistake more oftentimes than not, so just bear with me. When you look at the Raiders, the Raiders bring in Marcus Mariota to push, to compete with Derek Carr. Did they have to do that? I don't think they did. Did they feel like they had to do that? Apparently, I'm not feeling like the the Raiders really know what they're doing right now. They just want all these guys on their team to come in and compete. But it's one thing to have guys to come in and compete, and it's another to overpay the guys to come in and compete and ultimately maybe lose the opportunity at a starting job. That's what I could potentially see with Derek Carr and Marcus Mariota battling it out. But I know one thing is for sure. Cam Newton does belong on a team. Cam Newton does belong in a quarterback competition. And if there was any team that truly should go out there and make a move for Cam Newton, it is the Los Angeles Chargers. An ideal backup playing situation scenario in a perfect world if Cam Newton was buttoned up and and, and wanted to behave and be a good soldier, the Buffalo Bills would be a perfect fit. But I don't think it's that simple. When it comes to Cam Newton, there is a lot of tape to cut through uh, with a player like Cam Newton. But you mean to tell me that Tyrod Taylor is better than Cam Newton? I don't think so. I don't think so. If I were the Chargers, if I was Anthony Lynn, I would go out and make that move, bring him in on a one year, two year deal with heavy incentives. Um, If those incentives are not met, If that performance is not reached, then the Chargers could literally part ways with them and, you know, not be on the hook for for much money. So that's how I see it. A very complicated legacy in terms of the career of Cam Newton. He came, he saw, he did conquer, but ultimately it still wasn't enough for the Carolina Panthers. And ultimately Cam Newton is now a free agent. I'm Ryan Thomas. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. You can find me on Twitter at Ryan Thomas Take. You can find me on Instagram at Ryan Thomas Take. I'm always posting content for the sports fans all around the globe. Let's get through this trying time together. One way to do it is to distract ourselves with senseless sports news. Not senseless, senseful sports opinion on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. You can find this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud.